Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at the Demco Air Force One Supplemental Braking System for air brakes on a 2017 Chevy Equinox. And when it comes to flat towing your vehicle, there's going to be five main components that are required. Now, we'll start on the vehicle side. The first one's going to be the base plate. And the base plate attaches to the frame of the vehicle, creating a mounting point for our tow bar. So the arms here attach to our base plate, and that's how we connect to our tow bar, which is going to be our second component. And the tow bar just makes the connecting point between the towed vehicle and the RV. Now you're also going to have your diode wiring and this is a six pole that goes to our seven pole on the RV and that's going to transmit signals of braking, turn signals, running lights, and basically let the people behind you know what you're actually doing, keeping you safe and legal. Now you also have your supplemental braking system and this is going to allow the brakes on the vehicle to come to a stop or slow as you apply them on the RV. You're also going to have your breakaway switch just in case of an accidental disconnect. That's going to apply the brakes, keeping the vehicle from rolling down the highway. And then finally, we have our safety chains here, which is also just a secondary safety in case of an accidental disconnect. And that's going to attach to the base plate here as well as the hitch on the RV. So the Air Force One has its module here, and this is the brains of the operation. And it's gonna take the air pressure from the air brakes on the RV, and that's gonna have that coiled cable, allowing air pressure to go here and disperse to the cylinder inside the vehicle, bringing that vehicle to a slower stop when called for by the RV. Now, if you do have a motorhome with air brakes, me personally, this is my go-to option. It's a great system, it's easy to install, and generally has nothing but great reviews from other customers. Now, if you do have normal brakes, hydraulic brakes, or electric brakes on your RV, I recommend the Stay and Play Duo. That's also another great system. But again, if you have air brakes, you are kind of limited to the Air Force One and just a smaller window of supplemental braking systems. So as I activate the brakes on the RV, it's gonna transmit that to our vehicle and do the same and slow the car down. So now in the RV, as I press the brakes, the brakes are also gonna be applied on that towed vehicle. And in my camera, I can actually see the indicator light lighting up, letting me know that the brakes are working. Now that we've gone over a few features, you're probably wondering what is the installation like? And overall, this is actually one of the easier systems to hook up, but I do highly recommend doing this while you have the front fascia off when you're putting your base plate on. Otherwise, it is a little bit trickier to route some of the stuff, and really that's what the install comes down to, is planning your attack and making sure that you can make those connections in nice and open spots. Now, speaking of that installation, let's take a look at that now. Now here we are under our RV and you can see this is going to be our rear axle and most of the times you're going to find where you need to mount your tank and also tie into your lines right before that front axle. So you're going to want to check under there and you're going to be looking for a large diameter green hose and generally that's a good sign that you found your supplied air. Now all RVs are kind of set up a little bit different but the main thing that we're going to be doing is tying into our supplied and metered air. and. So pretty much just putting a T in line with each of them is gonna allow us to get air to our tank and allow our braking system to work. Now what you're gonna to want to do is find your metered air first. And ours I found pretty quickly uh, right here going into this uh, brake manifold here. You can see up here this kind of connects into that next manifold up top. And I unhook this and then push the air brakes and that's a great way to determine if you have the right one. It should actually take that pressure out of the line. So you're gonna to wanna to bleed that down anyway because you're gonna be tying into the airlines. You don't want it under pressure. So if you unhook your push connect fitting by pushing in and pulling the hose, sometimes they can be a little bit tricky. You can leave that out or you can have someone pump the brakes until that air is dispersed. And if it is coming out of that line that you unplugged, that's a good sign that you found your metered air. Now your supplied air, as I said, generally is gonna be this large diameter green hose. It's gonna match the push connect diameter that comes in your kit. So check to make sure that you found that. And then once you have, you can actually tie into each of the lines by cutting them. Now, when it comes to cutting lines, you don't wanna use just a pair of wire snips or something along those lines. Having a tubing cutter or a sharp razor blade to go through to get a nice clean cut is gonna make sure that it bites onto those push connect fittings and not leak over time. So I just went ahead, cut that, 
put our T fitting in here and then fed this over to our tank. I did the same thing on our large diameter supply air as well and I ran our uh, T air fitting over. And during this whole process, these hoses, they're generally dusty and dirty just from being underneath the vehicle. I highly, highly recommend wherever you make your cut, take some brake cleaner and a rag and wipe that. That's going to give it a nice clean seal when you put it in the push connect fitting and really lessen the chances of it leaking. So once you've gone ahead and made your cuts, just make sure that you have enough room to get the T in there, but also don't cut it too short. So you can always cut a little bit more off. I just kind of put a cut down the middle, trimmed off a little bit until I was able to get this in place. So let's follow these two lines that I ran off of our T. And I just kind of routed over this rear cross member and just kind of zip tied them up as necessary, bringing them to our tank. The tank was pretty easy to mount up as well. There's multiple mounting holes that are slotted, so it's really gonna open it up to where you can put it. Sometimes you do have to drill into the chassis, but I was able to actually use the same bracket as this manifold on the brakes. Uh, I extended the hardware just to make sure it had a little bit more to bite onto and use some nylon lock nuts just to make sure that this isn't gonna rattle loose over time. But pretty easy looking at the tank. You're gonna see one side has two fittings. This is gonna be your metered air, as well as the line that actually goes to the back where the connection's made to your towed vehicle. The other side, you can see, has this little solenoid here. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a PRV of sorts, and that's gonna be our supplied air. So just make sure that you have the proper lines fit into each of them. And again, just push in, and you should kind of feel that snap into place, and a quick tug should tell you pretty quick that it's gonna be snug. Now, as far as routing your line all the way to the back, I just kind of went over that cross member and followed the frame rail and just tried to find some factory wire loom and zip tied it up until I made my way to the back of the vehicle where I mounted up our bracket with our fitting. The way I mounted it, I self tapped this into our hitch and I kind of put it at a little angle just to kind of match where our vehicle's lines are gonna be. And again, you just have a push connect fitting here. Now, once you have all of your attachments made, you're gonna to wanna to start that RV up and allow that air pressure to build back up. And that's gonna see if there's any leaks that are occurring in any of your connections. And good way to also check if you can't audibly hear leaking of air, you can take a soapy water solution and spray it all over your connection. So anywhere where you cut, put a fitting or push the line into the fitting, spray that down and look for large bubbles. And that's a good sign that there's a leak. So if that's the case, you may need to bleed down that supply or metered air again, just to get the air out of the line. And then you're gonna wanna just double check your connections. Again, you really want a nice clean square cut with no little burrs or anything like that. Cause really that can make a big difference. Same with that dust and dirt buildup. So make sure all your lines and connections are clean and not leaking. And then you're ready to hook up to your towed vehicle. Now, when it comes to a supplemental braking system, you're gonna have a few components that you'll have to kind of plan out the attack as far as laying it out in your vehicle. And it can kind of change however you want to install it. It's kind of up to you. There's a lot of different methods, but I'm gonna lay out how I did it. So main thing that you're gonna be tying into and tying off of is gonna be the actual Air Force One box itself. I chose to mount mine here just using some self-tapping screws that goes through the plastic as well as the metal and it kind of goes through the bracket here. Now it does rest on the fan shroud or close to it um, and you may say well it could get pretty hot there but this can actually live underneath the uh, hood of the vehicle with no problems. And I did have a little bit of uh, rubbing of the AC hose so I just put a little extra airline tube. I cut that and put it on the edge so there's no chafing. But from the box you're actually going to have three different airlines. You're going to have a brass nipple and this is where your larger diameter hose is going to go and this is going to eventually tie into our brake booster. Now you also have an air in and an air out and those are going to go to the front of the vehicle where you're going to have your connection uh, point for your airline that's going to connect to the RV and then the other one's actually going to feed through the firewall into the interior where it makes its way to the cylinder which actually depresses the brake. Speaking of that cylinder, that air out, you can see ties into the push connect fitting at the top of it. And when called for, that's going to put pressure on this cylinder and pull that cable, which is mounted to the firewall with some self-tapping screws and pull the pedal, bringing the vehicle to a slow or stop when you press it in your RV. 
Here at the front of our vehicle, we have our breakaway switch, and this is going to be just in case of an accidental disconnect, it's gonna pull this cable, and that's gonna bring the vehicle to a stop. It's gonna put the pressure on the brakes, and that way it's not rolling down the highway. Now, this is going to also have this coiled cable, which will attach to the hitch on the RV. Now, our air from our air brakes are going to be attaching via a pigtail coiled air line and that's going to have a connection here and then connect to the RV. So there is an air line here that is connected and that just feeds into our air in on that box. So now that we've covered the air in and air out, we'll talk about this large diameter uh, hose here. You can see I have a one-way check valve and that's just going to make sure that we're not pulling air from the crankcase. Uh, now you can see this routes kind of it's going to get a little tricky here but i was able to kind of loop this around and the reason being um, is you're tying into your factory brake booster line so you'll have to make a cut and you also have to put a t as well as a check valve in place and make that connection now as far as the hose diameter on here in the kit there's actually a reducer so i had to use that in order to get those to meet up but you're essentially just tying this t in to that factory line um, so the factory line is still able to pull from that crankcase but having this T here with one-way check means that the compressor or our Air Force One box can pull air pressure but not from the engine. So again it looks kind of uh, tricky and a little scary to be tying into your line but really you're just putting something that T in there just to be able to get that air pressure. Now as far as the electrical goes on the Air Force One it's actually pretty simple. Our box has two black wires and it really doesn't matter which one you use but one of those is going to need to be a ground and so I've just gone ahead and I mounted a well I used the factory screw here with a ring terminal to get our ground and then the other one I just made a connection with our breakaway switch and our breakaway switch has an orange and black wire and it's kind of tucked down here but you can see there's our heat shrink butt connector and I do highly recommend picking some of these up. We have them here at e-trailer and it's great for if it's in an engine bay or living outside the vehicle. Once you heat shrink this down it creates a nice tight seal and that way water's not going to get in start corroding your wires. So again we have our ground. This black is going to connect to the black that is on our breakaway switch. So since it's mounted in the front I just kind of routed that up when we had our front bumper off and made my way through here and made that connection. Now the breakaway switch also has an orange wire that goes off of it as well. And I've actually used a little bit of wire loom here to feed that up just to kind of keep it looking a little bit cleaner. And then from there I tied into this violet wire. It almost has like a brown color to it but they call it violet. And this is run through to the firewall. We'll get to that in a second. But these two I used a heat shrink butt connector and then actually tied into our fuse holder. Now this is going to give us our 12 volt power and throughout the process when installing make sure you have the fuse out of here until you're completely hooked up and ready to test the system. And then from there I just notched out a little piece so we could tie on to that terminal on our positive giving us that 12 volt power supply. So now we can go back to our violet and this actually passes through our firewall and I passed this at the same time that I ran our air out because that has to go to the cylinder and because this needs to connect to our reed switch it's really nice to be able to do that one go that way you're not having to feed a couple wires at different times you can kind of do it one pass and make it a lot easier so now let's head inside the vehicle and I'll show you the rest of the electrical now your reed switch is on the cylinder and what that does it's got a magnet and it picks up when it the it's actually being applied and that's going to send the signal to our indicator light that we have and that's going to let the driver know when the brakes are actually being applied. Now on the reed switch you'll have two wires. You're going to have that violet and again that's the one that I passed through the firewall along with that air outline and where I passed it through I used the hood latch release. There's a small grommet and if you pass it through there uh, it kind of comes out underneath or around the brake master, master cylinder. It's a little bit tricky, but it's a pretty straight shot as far as getting everything through there that you need to, um, and it keeps it nice and tidy. So we have that violet running out there. The blue wire off the reed switch, you're going to want to connect that to the red wire on the indicator light. 
Now your indicator light is mounted on the mirror, and that way when you're towing your RV, you can look back and see when the bra brakes are being applied because it has some bright red LEDs here. And this, I just kind of, it has double-sided tape here that sticks really well to the mirror. And then I just ran those wires kind of up along the actual um, roof liner. And you can kind of just tuck it in there. And then when you get to your A-pillar, there's some plastic you can peel back. So I tuck this in the weather strip, stripping, making it nice and clean here. And then this panel pops out and I was able to run our wires. And I'll actually take this down and I'll show you my connections made. So you can see this is our bundle of wires here that I have, um, and I have a ground there as well. So the, on that indicator light, that red went to our blue from the reed switch, and then our black wire is just a ground. Mine's white because I had to extend the wires just a little bit, but you can see I have my ground here, and I've just tucked up the rest of the wires to kind of give it a nice clean look. Now, if you've chosen the kit with the wires, wireless coach link, it's going to go in very similar uh, install wise to either indicator light. And the coach link is a really nice option because you actually have a monitor in the RV and that way you can see right away that the brakes are being applied. There's actually an alarm and lights there. So if you don't have a camera on your RV that faces back towards your vehicle, you're probably not going to see that light so having that coach link is a really good option and it just kind of is nice to have it in the cockpit makes it nice a little more comfortable for the driver to just look down know that the brakes are being applied now if you've chosen the coach link kit you won't have the indicator light and you won't be wiring that up because you'll have that module in the rv but you do need to have a transponder and that's going to send that signal wirelessly to the monitor light in the RV. So you're going to wire up that transponder just the same way that you would your indicator light. Now once you have everything hooked up, you can go ahead and put that fuse in and when you're ready to test it, you're probably going to have to hook up to the RV and actually get air pressure going and that way it'll actually send that pressure to our cylinder because if you pull the breakaway switch now there's no air pressure built up so you're not going to see that pedal move so we're going to hook up to our rv and show you how that breakaway switch works so we'll go ahead and get our airline connection made between the rv and vehicle and go ahead in the rv and pump the brakes a few times and that's going to kind of charge this system up and make sure that it has air in that reservoir tank and also ready to go on the vehicle and then once you do that you can take your breakaway switch and pull. So immediately I know my brakes are being applied because of that indicator light on our mirror, but also we can check and see that the pedal has also been pulled towards the firewall. And that was a look at the Demco Air Force One supplemental braking system on a 2017 Chevy Equinox.